It's finally time for the final episode of the regular season. Before we do jump in to the college football playoffs, week number 15, beginning this episode away at Oklahoma. And as you see right here, Oklahoma is the number two team in the country. So technically, according to the college football rankings, this is going to be the most difficult game we have played up to this point in our career and in this season. Away at home against number two, Oklahoma. As you see the rest of the top 32 college football rankings, TCU has climbed from like the bottom 10 in the rankings all the way to number three in the country. Same thing as Alabama, who was like, I think, three and four in the year and have won six straight games to skyrocket all the way to four in the polls. Houston, who was once number one in the country in 7-0, now are still in the top five, but now drop to nine and four on the year at number five in the country. Clemson is eight, four and one at number six, as our only loss in the year is to number eight now, Penn State, or eight and five on the year. As there's really not been too many shakeups in the top 15 or so, Oregon's climbed up there at eight and five. Same thing as Washington, we're now eight and five. Michigan State's dropped to 15, as Miami, Notre Dame, and Florida State, UCLA, are all six and seven on the year. South Carolina has also climbed, and Stanford too. Two teams that were in the bottom, like five or six in the country, now are 16 and 17. So they're like mid-range, fighting for a playoff spot. Now the bottom 10 teams in the country, Ohio State, one of the biggest disappointments on the year. But talk about biggest disappointments. Look at Georgia, a team that you would expect to fight for the national championship. It's the second to last ranked team in all of college football and is now tied for the worst record in all of college football as Virginia Tech finally, poor freaking Virginia Tech, won the second game of the year. But I'm pretty safe to say Georgia and Virginia Tech don't really have a shot at making the college football playoff. As the most important part of today's episode, because pretty much we're already guaranteed a one seed in the college football playoffs, is the fact that we are fighting to be the first ever true freshman to win the Heisman Trophy. And at the end of today's episode, we will be able to see if we can accomplish just that. Then away week 16 against West Virginia, number 13 in the country, and then finishing off this season at home against Michigan State, who we throttled last episode, which I do think we might as well just go ahead and simulate week 17 if we do win the first two games, because there's really no point in playing, because pretty much we are guaranteed the number one spot in the college football polls. With that said, jumping right into it, away at number two, Oklahoma. Number one versus number two. Let's see if we can remain a one-loss team. And before we do get into the video, dudes, I am doing a huge giveaway over on Instagram. You have a chance to win one of four copies of Madden 20. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. I'll link you to the post so you can see how to enter. It's super easy. There's literally no point in not going to enter. And if we can get up to 20,000 followers and get that post to 10,000 likes, that adds in even more copies that I will give away. We're getting super close to those two numbers, so make sure to go into the giveaway if you haven't. And I'm doing an extremely similar giveaway over on Twitter, so it's the same exact stipulation. I'll leave a link to that in the description box as well. Just make sure to go into those giveaways in total between Instagram and Twitter. Eight copies of Madden 20 will be given away, so hopefully guys are excited for that. Traveling to Norman, Oklahoma, UCF at Oklahoma. The home field, <laughs> we're playing at the Swamp. The Swamp has been relocated all the way to Oklahoma. What a game. What a game. Oklahoma's home field. But it is Kyler Murray led Oklahoma Sooner team. As hopefully our defense, who's played pretty well throughout this season, can limit the former Heisman winner. As starting off this ball game, we can see. As let's see how this ball game begins. Our defense actually did hold Oklahoma and Kyler Murray to zero points. It's time now to get on the board and take this lead against number two Oklahoma. Second down and four play action pass. As I don't know what to do. Bad, bad, bad. Let's throw this ball to X on the run out of bounds. At least we didn't get sacked. It's going to be a third down. Third down and six. I, I originally called a screen pass, but they're extremely ineffective. So you know what? Let's take off here on our own. Use our Heisman legs. Picking up the first down. Keeping the chains moving. 
first down and 10. Hand up, up the middle on a read option. Killens Jr. is going to take this one for a first down all the way to the 33-yard line. Like I said, dudes, if we can get Killens Jr. going this last episode and into the playoffs, there's going to be no team that can stop us if we can actually have a balanced attack. Second down and 10 here. Slants open again. That's Nixon with the catch. Now inside the Oklahoma red zone. We continue just to toy around with defenses. Even the number two team in the country can't stop our passing attack. Third down and four. What type of blocking scheme was that, dude? If you can send why. No, what? We're taking ourselves. Scramble for the first down at the five. An interesting play there. I thought we were about to get sacked, but as long as it was effective, all that matters. Well, after a delay of game. It's a third down and go at the 10-yard line. Obviously, I'd rather pick this touchdown up, see if we can actually make it happen here. Killens Jr., if he makes this catch, oh, nice play from the Oklahoma defender. And they are going to hold us to three points on this opening drive. One of the few teams to be able to do that against us as we continue with this lead because our defense continues to be dominant, and that's not what I expected here with UCF. I thought our offense was going to have to carry our games, but our defense, for the most part, I mean, if it wasn't for our defense, we, we would not be, what are we, 12-1 on the year at this point? We're going to have opportunities like this Nelson Jr. with the catch down to the 42. The slant should be open the last second we get sacked. That's now going to be a third down 11. I don't think my kicker can make a field goal from this range, so let's see if we can keep the chains moving here. We know with our ability, no first down is out of the question. Play action pass here. Oh, God. I see the man. I see the good guy. The throw is going to be out of bounds. And they might hold us to a field goal again. Let's see if our kicker can actually make it from this distance. Our defense isn't going to be able to hold Oklahoma school this all game, obviously. We do make the field goal, and maybe they are. How do we hold Kyler Murray in Oklahoma to no points so far to this point in the game? It's been a quarter and a half, and they haven't even sniffed the end zone yet. We've got to take advantage of this. It's not going to last all game long. He has a step on the defender. Throwing this ball deep. Snelson Jr. Nice play by the cornerback. See, they don't catch every ball. You just don't see that because it's not always in the highlights. Come on, UCF. Third down and 10. Ah, oh, I thought he was running the out route. Killens Jr. Drops the ball. I'm in a first down regardless. As this has been one of the most underwhelming performances we've had in the season thus far offensively. And there it is. I told you guys. Oklahoma was going to end up scoring a touchdown. As with a minute left to go in the half. It's time to get something going here. We've got to show off this Heisman arm. As give me a second to throw the football. Nice route there from Davis. Gets us out of our own end zone. How do we? How is the ball? How are we at the six yard line? Well, they just scored a touchdown and kicked the ball off. Must have had a penalty or something. First down and sin. The pocket's collapsing. We break off a sack. This could be good. A good throw here. We get sacked again, dude. I should have just taken off. Their player gets injured, so thank God the injury timeout for them allows us to stop the clock. 38 seconds to go. B, down the field. This, this is going to be interesting. Of course. Of course! Snelson Jr. Touchdown! UCF It's about time for our Bolitnikoff Award winner. To come down with his first huge catch of the ball game. Goes up one-on-one. -on -one, makes that Oklahoma DB look like a high school recruit. A two-star recruit at that. As we do take this lead going into halftime. We get the ball here. Now it's time to make this a two-possession lead. To start off this second half. What happened? Bro, what happened? I was looking down at my phone. And I just, I was expecting like a five yard carry because that's all we've been having all season long. It's like two, three, four yard carries. I'm not gonna lie, I looked down the whole entire time trying to respond to the text messages. What the heck just happened? A 71 yard from Killens Jr. He broke two tackles, dude. The amount of tackles. The amount of tackles that are broken in this college football mod are absolutely insane. Two broken tackles, and he's gone. Somehow, all the Oklahoma defenders caught up with him. I thought that would have been a touchdown with how much space he had. But regardless, what a play. It's about time Killings Jr. did something productive on the ground and made a drive easy for us. First down and goal. Can we end this drive with a touchdown? 
Want to take it ourselves. If we run over this Oklahoma defender, we don't have to. With our elusiveness, flex on him. That's going to be UCF touchdown. As our coach wants us to go for two to try and make this a 14-point ball game. I think Oklahoma will be able to come back from a 14-point deficit. I'm trying to avoid burping because I don't want to end the commentary. You know what? Going to scramble again. Easy. Too freaking easy. 21-7 to seven ball game. See if our defense can get us the ball back and we can just work on chewing this clock. And of course they do. What a defense, man. I think that's actually more surprising how good our defense has been this year than how good our offense has been this year. What I tell you. At least we hold them to a field goal. Still a touchdown on this drive. Makes it a three-possession game. And if we take a three-possession game into the fourth quarter, no way at all Oklahoma comes back. I say that third down and seven, dude. Getting a little sketched out here. The quick slant. Another nice play from the Oklahoma DB. As their defense has been probably the most, the toughest defense to move the ball against all year long. As our defense gets the ball back. And once again, our offense really isn't winning the game on their own. It's our defense. Quick pass, curl route, Williams. First down, breaking tackles all the way down to the Gator head at midfield. As we're going to take this 21-10 lead heading into halftime. And with how things have been going this season, as long as we score on this drive, we should be able to come out of Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, the, the, the newly located swamp with the W. And for some reason, Oklahoma thinks it's a great idea to come out of the tumble, to come out of the tunnel at the end of the third quarter. Never seen teams go back in the locker room at the end of the, at the, end of the quarter. And that's an interesting strategy nonetheless. Oh God, what does a man do in a situation like this? Take a sack, I guess. Well, third down and 15 with three minutes left to go. A touchdown somehow on this drive would definitely end the ball game. But if we only kick a field goal, Oklahoma's definitely not out of it just yet. We get this post round, an accurate ball. We get it, of course. Williams with the catch down to the four, down to the four yard line. 100% trying to end the ball game on this drive. Four yards away from doing so. Well, running the ball obviously isn't effective anymore on the goal line unless we're scrambling third and goal. Let's end the game right here. Bell wide open. Our shifty tight end continues to be a comfort blanket for us. Although we don't necessarily need one here since we can throw the ball so effectively. But nonetheless, we do take a three possession lead as our defense, not us, our defense is the story of this ball game. Holding Oklahoma and Kyler Murray, who is one of the biggest challengers for our Heisman Trophy, trying to take it away from us. Hold them to only 10 points in this ball game. And this game right here might have solidified us winning a Heisman Trophy and being the first ever true freshman to do so. And I think with the way this season's been going, we deserve it. As that does it, 35 to 10. UCF with the W as we might have just won the Heisman with that performance. Although with us it wasn't really good. It was more about beating the number two team in the country and Kyler Murray losing today's game and being held to only 10 points with the UCF night defense limiting him to no touchdowns in the 40. We ended up 30, actually probably one of our worst performances of the season. 13-25, 214 yards, 3 touchdowns, no interceptions. We only had 17 yards on the ground, which is probably a season low. But we did have a touchdown, though. Killings Jr., 150 yards. The reason we did score as many points as we did, although we were pretty underwhelming. But, of course, Dredrick Snelson Jr. having a big game. And Mr. Bell coming up with two big touchdown grabs as we do improve to 13-1 and on the year. As with that big W, we advance into Week 16, and like I said, this will be the last regular season game that we do play as we'll just sim week 17. And even if we do lose, which would be unfortunate, we'll still easily have the number one seed in the college football playoff. So West Virginia, a top 10 team in the country now at 9-5. and five. Let's see. I mean, if we can beat Oklahoma away from home and West Virginia away from home as well and back-to-back -back weeks, I mean, I think we definitely have to be the favorite to bring home this college football playoff title. Morgantown, West Virginia. Now the question is, where is Morgantown, West Virginia the home of? You would think it's the West Virginia Mountaineers, but uh, as we've seen, we've seen the swamp relocated to Oklahoma, so who the heck knows what we're about to expect here in West Virginia. Oh, 
The Texas Longhorn Stadium. Uh, that was my second guess. This should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we can get this W against Will Greer and the West Virginia Mountaineers and once again solidify our Heisman ring and break the record and become the first ever true freshman to win the Heisman Trophy in college football. One more final huge performance should make that a 100% guarantee. Oh, what a play action pass. So we should be able to complete this pass to A. Nixon, the catch midfield just like that. I think West Virginia's defense, although their offense is very opponent, we, we should be able to carve up their secondary quite a bit in today's game. Oh, the wheel route, wide open. Nixon with the catch. The safety bit too much, missed the ball. First down at the six yard line. First down and goal from the six. Let's punch this ball in. Snelson Jr. with the catch. That's way too easy for UCF Knights once again. It's like us playing on a playground. It's like this feels our monkey bars as that's gonna be a touchdown. Look at it, even our defense holds West Virginia to a scoreless first drive. Let's try to take advantage of that and make this a two possession ball game. You know what, I think with this matchup, depending on what the safeties do, I might just chunk this ball deep. Yep, it's gonna happen. Chunking this ball deep to Nixon. He make this catch. Oh no, it's double covered. That's a GG, an interception of some sort. Nope, thank God. Like I said, it doesn't happen every time. Gonna scramble here, down the field, not gonna catch up to us. That's gonna be a first down in the plus territory. Trying to quickly make this a 14 point game. Oh, God. The dig as the catch. Snelson, another first down. Dude, I feel like I'm playing on freshman difficulty. I don't know if it's just something to do with the college football mod, but this just seems a lot, I don't know, easier than regular all Madden on Madden 19 console. But I'm not complaining. It's actually extremely fun to play, carving up defenses. As I didn't see the deep safety. It's the interception. As I said. Feels like we're playing on freshmen. But you're, when you're as talented as that guy, everything feels like it's on freshman mode. <laughs> That's a touchdown for UCF. That's a one-handed grab. These receivers making catches I've never seen before in this game. 14-0. We get the ball back again. As I have a feeling, dudes, this is about to be an absolute dominant performance from your UCF Knights. First down and goal, Nixon, touchdown, UCF, first play of the second quarter, 21 to nothing. This isn't even fair, we got the ball right back. Our defense with a turnover in the red zone, it's about to be, this might be our biggest blowout of the season up to this point in this series. Nice play, it's a sack. We're going to take off here. I think this could be a touchdown. If we can get past the defender, run over him. We do touchdown. It remains too easy. We're a 5'10", 180-pound Cam Newton. We're a bowling ball with a robotic arm. And that sets up for a 15-1 season. The Heisman Trophy. As it looks like finally West Virginia gets on the board. But I think it's already too late for the Mountaineers. It's too much time in the pocket. There's, I did not see the deep safe this interception, isn't it? Huh? Can somebody explain to me what's going on? Like, our receivers are aliens. I'm telling you, it has to be something with this college football mod. And it feels weird just throwing the ball up and that happening. But this is mental. Absolutely mental. Like, at this point, it's just expected with this wide receiver core that we have. But that's a touchdown. 35-7 to lead in our defense. I mean, I don't even control the defense, but they're playing out of their mind. Turnover machines here, dude. We might have 40 freaking points before halftime here. I think we're going to do it. We're going to do it. That was close. That was freaking close. Second down and goal here. I'm going to take this myself. I'm going to take it myself, and there's so much space, dude. Teams not learn to always put a spy on your boy. That's our sixth total touchdown of the half. 
as we don't get the ball. Our coach just needs to take us out, dude. Let us be healthy for the college football playoff. 42 to 14. I think it's just time to run the ball, not have anybody get injured, and come out of Morgantown, out of uh, Texas Stadium, and get a huge dub. Probably one of our biggest dubs of the season. Uh oh, not good, not good. What does a man do? They have three wide open receivers in the same exact vicinity. Uh, what he does is he throws the touchdown because that vicinity was inside the opponent's end zone. Touchdown UCF, 49-14. to Like, Virginia, West Virginia scores, but it's still a freaking bloodbath, dude. As that does it, what a huge win here today for your UCF Knights as we continue to dominate the college football landscape and we easily lock up the number one seed in this first college football playoff in the new college football division as we come out of Morgantown with a 49-21 to victory and one of our simplest, easiest, and less stressful wins of this season. Probably our best performance, most consistent performance of the year. Only four incompletions, 350 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions as we had 71 yards on the ground as well as apparently Killen Jr. got injured. That's not good. But we also added two touchdowns on the ground as well. Our leading receiver, Mr. Trey Nixon, 185 yards and a touchdown as both Gabriel Davis and Snelson Jr. both had two touchdowns through the years. Our team continues to dominate. But guys, of course, it doesn't matter how well we did in the regular season if we crash in the playoffs. So we got to continue to play like every game is our last. Because, I mean, technically, that is the case. As we do get another upgrade, our Scrambler I archetype, as we are now up to an 83 overall, but plus two confidence boost, as we do get an upgrade to awareness, break sack, which we didn't need, and throw accuracy short, which we didn't need as well, but we continue to get better and better, and that's not good for the rest of college football. As we do win the Heisman Trophy, the first ever true freshman to win the award, and something you guys didn't know, which is crazy, a crazy storyline for this college football season. Mackenzie Milton, the former quarterback at UCF who came back from injury, apparently transferred to Michigan and played this season with the Michigan Wolverines, who went 10 and six on the year and actually came in second in the Heisman voting. What a guy, quickly came back Quickly came back from that injury. I guess the UCF coaching staff didn't trust he was going to be back. So he wanted to transfer so he could play again. And as you see, he had a pretty good season. Kyler Murray, who he did beat, came in third. As it was a big reason. As a big reason why he didn't win the Heisman was because we did beat them head-to-head -head last week of the season, or the second to last week of the season, and it was absolutely a demolition. Derek King of Houston came in fourth, Nick Fitzgerald of Mississippi State in fifth, Tua Tonga Viola of Alabama came in sixth, Jordan Tiamu of Ole Miss in seventh, Will Greer of West Virginia, who he did just beat and annihilate in eighth, Sean Robinson of TCU in ninth, and Trace McSorley. The only quarterback to beat us specifically this season came in. And look at this, dude. Our three receivers, our top three receivers, all came in one, two, three in the voting for the Bolitnikoff Award. Dredrick Snelson Jr. won the award, Trey Nixon in second, and Gabriel and Gabriel Davis in third place. Had nobody else in the top 10, but uh, if we if we had four receivers in the top 10, that would be mental. All of three receivers, one, two, three, it was mental enough. And we do have four upgrades from winning the MVP and all the awards that we do get. So we're gonna even improve more. So college football needs to watch out, my dude, as we are gonna be improved all the way up to an 87 overall with the plus two confidence boost, an actual 85 overall, but with how well we've been playing this season, up to an 87, dude. Absolutely mental. We're up to superstar development as well, if you did see that. I do want to check out our final stats on this. We had the best offense in all of college football, and we had the fourth best defense in college football, which is the biggest surprise, I would say, of this season. And looking at it, it's 42 touchdowns, only 14 interceptions, 
5,356 yards. We were sacked six or three times, which is probably the worst part about our whole entire team. Adrian Killens Jr. led us with 917 yards in the ground and 12 touchdowns, but we did lead us with 18 rushing touchdowns. Interested to see our receivers. We had three receivers over 1,000 yards. Dredrick Snelson Jr. with 1,600 yards and 11 touchdowns. Trey Nixon with 1,000 yards, 1,100 yards to be exact, 12 touchdowns. And Gabriel Davis with 1,000 yards and 9 touchdowns. Don't forget Brett Bell, our big tight end with 500 yards and 6 touchdowns. Defensively, which we didn't get, obviously see much of this year. Pat Jasinski, our defensive captain, our middle linebacker with 92 tackles. And we had Brendan Hayes and Titus Davis. Both of our defensive ends with 15 sacks on the year. And Burgess Becker, our outside linebacker with eight sacks on the year. And a leading interception. And Navelle Clark, our cornerback, led us with interceptions. And I do want to see some stats across college football before we get out of this episode. Obviously, we had a huge year. Most passing yard. Will Greer in second. KJ Costello in third. Tua in fourth. And Brett Ripon in fifth of Boise State. Most touchdowns goes to us. Will Greer, Kyler Murray in third, and Will Greer had the most interceptions with 22. Rushing yard wise, Travis Homer of Miami with the most rushing yards. Most rushing touchdowns, of course, goes to us with Damien Harris of Alabama in second, and Travis Homer of Miami in third. Asa Cedric Ware of USC in third, and Adrian Killens actually in fourth. Receiving yard wise, it looks like most yards, of course, goes to us. Nobody even close. Lil Jordan Humphrey of Texas in second. Trey Nixon in third. And Derrick Judy of Alabama in fourth. Most receiving touchdowns goes to Hollywood Brown of Oklahoma. And Seth Williams is tied with Trey Nixon. And Dredrick Snelson in fourth. And J.J. Arcega Whiteside in fifth. Defensively, most tackles goes to John Houston of USC. Most sacks goes to Clellan Farrell of Clemson with 20. Derrick Brown of Auburn with 17 and a half. Ed Oliver of Houston with 17 and a half. And Marlon Davidson with 15 and a half from Auburn. And also Ben Benogu with 14. And I don't know. Well, didn't we have two players with 15 sacks? Well, we got enough accolades as it is. But guys, that is going to do it for the regular season finale. As the college football playoff will start next episode. I'm not going to spoil who we play until next episode. So be sure to check out the next episode. Which should be coming out tomorrow. Hopefully guys did enjoy the regular season. It was a lot more successful than what I expected. But regardless, hope you guys did find it fun to watch. As hopefully we can finish off this mini series by winning the college football playoff. But with that said, guys, that is going to do it. Hopefully you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new and turn on the notification bell if you haven't. Make sure to drop a like if you did enjoy and enter the giveaway in the description box below. We only have a few more days to enter it, so make sure to go do so. But I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. God bless and peace.